Wonderful. Well, it is one past, and since this is a half hour webinar, I say let's get started. Uh, again, we're going to use the chat, the questions, excuse me, the questions panel. Submit your questions uh, while one of us is talking, the other is going to be looking at questions. So we'll we'll try to take them throughout as we can. Uh, otherwise, it'll be um, fairly straightforward. We're talking about live versus on-demand training. Uh, I'm Rose Benedict, Strategic Consulting Lead, and I'm joined by Andrew Jolly, our Director of Strategic Design. Uh, we are real happy to be doing this because it's only 30 minutes. We call it a masterclass because, well, Andrew and I combined have been doing this for, I don't know, let's just say 50 years if we're going to combine it. But also, um, it's, a, it's a staple, right? This is a staple question. And everything we do sort of falls into these categories. So masterclass, meaning we're going to get to defining it, how to think about it and use it quickly. Uh, don't worry too much about scrambling to take notes, unless, of course, that's your learning style. We will follow up with a handout that's got all the good key points and, and good takeaways for you. In the meantime, let's uh, carry on, shall we? So uh, my quote for today is, you need a little bit of insanity to do great things. I just like the reminder that, you know, some of the best ideas we've ever had have, have sounded insane initially. Uh, I love it. And Andrew? Yep, my my quote today is we learn fastest when we're dropped in the deep end. It feels like um, a theme uh, for the last 12, 18 months. Um, and, you know, it's often, uh, we, we get these sort of triggers to make us uh, look at things in a different way, try things out. Um, you know, if there is one tiny silver lining uh, about these challenging times, it's that we kind of reflect very much on how we're doing things. And I think our industry and us as learning practitioners have been um, challenged uh, a lot. And so hopefully, you know, we're bringing some of that thinking to you today. Great. Uh, without further um, ado, Andrew, you want to let everyone know why we at least know what we're talking about? Yes, I will. We're, we're really lucky at Leo um, to be part of a large group of uh, companies, uh, part of the Learning Technologies Group. Um, I won't go into um, them in detail, but we have platform and software companies, uh, associate partnership companies, and they range from LMSs to authoring tools to um, uh, data focused uh, learning analytics tools and so on. And then we have contents and service teams, uh, Leo, where Rose and I lead up the consulting team. Um, Leo GRC, which is, uh, focuses on governance, risk and compliance, learning and training, and our partners at Preloaded who are uh, focused on serious games or um, uh, adult learning games, if you like. So we're in a position to um, work with our, our colleagues and understand a lot of what a huge range of organisations are doing and work with very many of them, which is great. And at Leo, we are... Um, we look at strategy, we, we have partner, we have teams that develop technology and platforms, learning academies and so on is very much a theme of the moment. We've been developing learning, digital learning content of all sorts for many years, but we talk about delivery a lot because we work in collaboration with our clients to make sure that what we're doing works and we're kind of with them as they deliver it into their organizations. And Rose and I focus a lot on measurement and collecting data and making sure we have a view of what's working which is really really important to us so today uh we've been speaking over the last 12 months a lot about live versus virtual because in the in in this this time we have all had to pivot to almost entirely virtual delivery and if you're interested in that and you know the whole going virtual story go to our website look at other webinars we've done, recordings, ebooks, so on and so on. But today we wanted to revisit one of the core questions that we've always been asking, which is live versus on-demand learning. And in the short time we have together, just to kind of trigger that, that question and that discussion again, because it's still a really important question to be asking. Right, excellent. Thank you, Andrew, for that, for that differentiation. Um, we do get sort of caught up in, in what do the words mean. So first, let's talk about specifically what live and on-demand are. 
Um, and you've probably heard, or if you haven't heard, these are the terms that we use uh, to be a little bit more precise, synchronous versus asynchronous. Um, synchronous being when learners and instructors are in the same place at the same time. Uh, that could be virtual like we are now, uh, or um, actually physically in the same space. Whereas on demand, the term you'd hear is asynchronous, meaning that it's not in time together, that learners and instructors' experiences are happening at different times and, and potentially in different places. For synchronous learning, um, you've heard of this as, uh, the, well, the benefits, I should say, are that it's real-time interaction, like what we're doing now, and you can ask questions and presumably get answers. Uh, Co-location, visibility, right? We can see each other, we can see things. And there's a natural social element to it, or it acknowledges that you know we are social beings and we learn together. Um, whereas features of asynchronous or on-demand would be things like uh, it's much more flexible. You can sort of do it in your own time, fit it into your work when or life in general when it makes sense, when you can. You can often repeat access, uh, so if you know it's not a one and done. Um, some examples of each for synchronous, this is your, your classic face-to-face, -face, uh, classroom, K-12 education, higher ed is often done like this, you know, now, yeah, even if it's virtual, it tends to happen at the same time. Um, webinars like we're doing now, traditional classrooms and facilitated sessions. Asynchronous, we think of our classic digital learning, or if you're, you know, older in the field, computer-based training or web-based training, you might have heard it as, but you know, e-learning, anytime learning, online learning, all of those terms, um, that's referring to asynchronous. And we also wanted to point out that resources and references um, and assets themselves can also be fall under asynchronous. So you might have videos or PDF files or whatever it might be, other assets um, that are also part of asynchronous. It's a matter of when it's being, when the experience is happening. Is it happening synchronously with others, live, or asynchronously on your own time in your own uh, in your own sync, as it were? So, uh, please, Andrew. Yes. Yes, I, I just um, wanted to say that uh, there are a couple of sort of interesting areas that come out right now because now, because we're so used to using virtual, we are like we are today recording our session. So something that originated as live becomes on demand and um, without giving anything away you know that does put the the kind of uh, an interesting spin on this question live versus on demand because live can be used as on demand yes. and that is a really important sort of point to make early on um, so I think I'm thinking a lot about the origination the origination of live versus on demand Really like what you've said, Andrew, and you've, uh, you've, as per usual, anticipated the point, right, which is that these aren't necessarily working versus each other, even though that's in our title. They really do tend to work with each other, and the, the, the line is not as distinct and definitive between, you know, which one should you use when. It's not quite as prescriptive as that. It takes more considerations. So what we've done um, is compiled the considerations uh, for each it's ways to think about them. So this is the slide we put together on live, which we sort of captioned as when it's good to be together, right? And that can mean for any reason, it might just be emotional um, or motivational, uh, or it could be, you know, uh, physical where you need to be touching and interacting with things. Um, before you scramble to take a screen capture or take notes, uh, this will all be in a handout uh, that you'll get right afterwards. Nice one pager. Um, so when it's good to be together, so things to consider are about the learning when you're deciding is do people have to have real-time interaction? That can be with each other, with experts, or even with things. Um, so when when you have to interact with a, with an expert, for example, to to get out information and and interview them, or or take advantage of the of hearing someone talk about something, which you know adds an element that you can't necessarily get. Um, if you're not live visiting. Then there's resources, and that's just really considering um, the resources that you have to create live training. So you might not have an expert who's available, or you might have experts who are only available during a short period of time. Um, you might not have the instructional design resources available. So for example, you may not have an authoring tool or somebody who knows how to create e-learning, in which case live makes a lot of sense. Um, and 
you might have guest experts, there might be budgetary restrictions. Um, and of course there's time and urgency. If a message needs to get out sort of quickly, um, there are advantages to doing it live versus on demand. Again, it's not cut and dry. There are reasons to use either, but uh, quite often we think of um, time or urgency in association with uh, a live event. Um, and we talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Other considerations are around visibility. Obviously, if you, somebody needs to see you as um, doing something or observe you, or if you need to observe someone or something, that needs to happen live. We can do that sort of with video now, especially as we get interactive video um, and like with our instilled platform where you can have conversations along moments in the videos. Certainly, the line gets blurred even more between what, what you, you know, need to do live, what you need to do on demand. However, um, the one thing that will never really change, I think, in my opinion, is complexity. Uh, if, you, if you need to make real-time adjustments to the complexity of the information, um, or if you can't anticipate where the moments uh, of difficulty are gonna be for the learners, then doing something live uh, makes a lot of sense where it can happen, and, and potentially in smaller groups. Uh, location, of course, uh, is the obvious one. Physical location, cultural location, and so on. Uh, again, what I want to just express is that these are considerations. So when real-time interaction with experts is critical, when there isn't time or budget or resources in general to develop a digital asynchronous version, or when um, the facilitator has to observe, uh, when that sort of complexity interaction is critical, those are all things to consider. It's not that it can't be done the other way, it's that they lend themselves better to live. Uh, Andrew, do we have any uh, questions popping up before we switch over to on demand? No, not specifically. Um, we can come back to, to some of them late, later. Um, um, al although, actually, there is one that does relate to this. So, Judith has said, and this, this is really a sort of virtual versus face to face type question. Um, what about hybrid classes when you're conducting? Mm. But you have some students in class and others online at the same time. So this this is sort of all in the live area. Um, we do have this sort of hybrid thing, especially as a lot of people, as we hope, are going to go back into offices, and suddenly we have these split classrooms of some people in a room and some people online. And uh, yeah. we do quite a lot of work with clients at the moment about setting out guidelines for hybrid and what works best but it is a bit difficult yes because you have different types of interaction in a room with with a facilitator uh, to those who are um, you know tuning in as we are now um, so Andrew uh, you said that the question came from someone named Judith Judith and everybody I want to tell you this is so timely I am actually writing the playbook on the hybrid when some are when some attendees are face to face and some attendees are virtual in the same session actually writing the uh, playbook on that right now so i have a lot to say about it uh it's a little off topic for this webinar judith i would say reach out um like i said i'm actually writing that including models and how you do it and how you can structure it so beyond beyond considerations and how to think about it and tips and into are there actual models that you can use um and so there's a lot going on there i think in terms of um it, to answer the question about hybrid in terms of using live and on demand in a blend versus a hybrid live right so be very clear back to talking about synchronous and asynchronous combining them to create a learning experience is absolutely the way to go right and mm -hmm. this can be as simple as pre-work right and then you get together and, and maybe do something with it um, or it can be as complex as a sustained journey over time where you maybe access resources and toolkits and so on in your job as you're working with other people and overall it's a it's a learning experience. Uh, so absolutely, um, the, com the, com the blend, I'll say blend instead of hybrid, the blend is the way to go. Um, so let's look at, not progressing forward, let's try that again. Okay, so let's look at on demand. Uh, this is when it's good on my own time. So maybe less about being together and more about I need to do it on my own time. And that can be for many reasons. And that's why needs and priorities here says vary, because it could be simply my schedule, my availability, the availability of facilitators. Um, it might be my schedule in terms of when I, when I feel comfortable making a contribution. 
as I think we make the mistake quite often of thinking that the person in, you know, the participant who is maybe quieter um, is not as engaged, but in reality, we find that those learners usually are reflecting and need time before they feel comfortable making a contribution. Um, and so that's all about a personal schedule there. So not just the availability, but my my way of learning and when I'm comfortable uh, contributing and the pace that I need to go at. And that also has to do with learning learning preferences. So if I want to learn right alongside um, a moment of need, you know, I might want that as a tutorial or a coaching moment or a different mode or a different channel um, in terms of my preferences for what I need to learn and when. And then uh, repetition and access. Obviously, the things that we, you may, to Andrew's point earlier, we can record a live session as we're doing, and then it is accessible over and over again. But I think you get into much more uh, repeatable asset um, and toolkit kind of view when you're looking at on demand. Um, those assets can all sort of live together in a place that you can access when and how you need and even in the order in which you need them. And then, of course, there's consistency. Well, I say, of course, but consistency is one I think that gets lost. I think the, the temptation is to say, if a message has to be very, very consistent, we want to write it down and make sure everyone sees it in the same way. But I would say that there's, there's consistency in the words, but then there's consistency in the message. And that is something that often you get when it's live and you can hear the tone of voice and you can hear, um, you can hear someone's passion, or you can hear what's important, or you hear the, the, the words that they choose to use. There's so much, you know, that 80% of communication is nonverbal that you lose. So um, there's a lot to be said about, um, aside from a regulatory situation, being consistent in your message by having the, uh, the tone and the nonverbal communication being consistent. And this leads to one point that's uh, really important, which is about transition training. A lot of training that we're asked to do is as a result of a shift in the business somehow. So maybe it's a digital transformation. Maybe it's we've acquired another company and some of our business processes or systems we use are training, uh, are changing, excuse me. And then we need to train people. So transition training is really interesting because you've got people who are going from current state to future state. And those are the that's the workforce you're trying to help. Those are the employees you're trying to help move along. Something has changed and you need to get them from where they are to where they need to be. Um, but consider somebody who joins the organization maybe a year later. Do they really care about how things used to be? You probably want them just to know how things are. So you can think about how you, you might want training, the parts of the training that address how things are, that current, that future state, to be more evergreen and long lasting and persist as um, uh, longer than maybe the transition moments where you're explaining to somebody something has changed and they need to understand the change and get their head around it. So you see quite often in that sort of transition training that there is more live training to support people who must change versus the current state, like this is what it is, this is how we are, this is how we behave, what you do in your role, being more of that repeat access um, on demand. Okay. So then the um, top tips, which I've kind of already said all of them, but let's just make them really short and punchy. Uh, none of the situations are definitive, right? There, there's an argument, there's always an argument for one way or the other. Um, it's a matter of thinking about it and just taking the moment to go which one makes sense here. Uh, blends are best. Um, we we've, we've, uh, gave this session earlier this morning uh, and again right now and in both of them this has come up from participants from ourselves this seems to be a big uh, big critical moment is that um, it's not either or and certainly they work best together uh, and then making selection like like bringing that question of should this be live or on demand as part of your intake or analysis process so this is more of a tip uh, for those who are in an LD function within an organization and the business might say hey we need this training or we need training on X or something, right? And um, they often say this needs to be an e-learning or so on. But if you make it a question at that moment of, okay, hang on, let's talk about, does this is this really live versus on demand? To make it part of that initial moment um, will really help. And then of course, either can be cost-effective. We hear this often. Which one is gonna cost less? What really matters, especially if you're 
it depends, excuse me, especially if you're thinking about opportunity cost and pulling people away versus having them do it in the flow of work and, and so on. So either of these can be cost effective depending on your context. Any questions before we go into a quick, uh, fun little rapid fire context? Um, I, I had one, uh, one question about assessments. And well, it was really a point, I think, that um, consistency sometimes in assessments and and so on you want to make sure clearly you're benchmarking everybody in exactly the same way um according to the same you know it, it, well same quite you're asking the same questions putting them in front of the same challenges and so on and so maybe in that context then on demand uh, some sort of tool to present precisely the same situation to each learner is is the one to do but it doesn't necessarily you could you I mean you could do it at the end of a classroom uh face-to-face -face session you know you could you could fit it into a blend couldn't you but that yeah. kind of consistency is really important sometimes when you're um certificating people and assessing them for sure yeah that's a, that's a really good point um assessments i think we tend to especially in a in a regulatory kind of situation we tend mm. to uh, want the assessment to be proof of, you know, somebody has seen these words and they can spit these exact words back out at me. Um, when assessment through observing behavior is actually going to be more rich and actually get you where you need to be um, and where employees need to be better. Uh, mm -hmm. that, I think that's a little bit of common sense, but we do get blinded by an audit trail or needing to prove that some specific words, uh, somebody can regurgitate them. So it's uh, again there's there's the context yeah come back to context being critical so rapid fire context i'm going to take us away on this andrew yeah sure um so uh what rose and i just wanted to do was was uh pull up a few examples in the in the minutes we have and just um see what you think so uh we 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 get involved in a lot of compliance learning in fact we've just been talking about that so is this, a, is this a live or on-demand opportunity, do you think? Anybody can put uh, put their answer into the questions pane. Um, so we have Leah saying on-demand. Um, what, what did we put, Rose, here? We, we put on read. Yeah. Um, well, why is that? It, th there is a consistency issue. Also, in an organization where we need to know that a thousand plus people have have done some really important piece of learning and been assessed. Um, we we need to have them potentially do it um, at a time convenient to them, um, and we need to know they've done it and that they've had this consistent experience. Um, so a lot of our learning is um, compliance learning is on demand, but does it have to be? Well, if we're talking about genuine behaviour change. Um, and we want people to consider their their attitudes their practices in 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 work then maybe live sessions is much more um, what we should do we should be we should be discussing collaborating talking around what it feels to be um you know to be in a, a, a situation in in our in our business our working life and how to deal with that so you know on demand isn't always the answer yeah, we've got Terry um, in the in questions saying I would have chosen blended. And Terry, you're you're again you're anticipating us. That is sort of where we're going. Remember the top tips: blend is best. Um, how about uh, communicating a new company strategy? How would you think about this one? We've got some saying live. Yeah, live. yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think e-learning for communicating a new company strategy might look a little silly. Uh, this is where the tone of the message and that nonverbal communication is really important. This is also where, uh, in times of transition, I think we get, you'll find a lot of organizations get a little scared about putting something in writing because it's still in flux. So to communicate the fact that things can't be nailed down yet, right, it makes sense to do that in a live situation. Now, could you do it on demand? Of course video the CEO talking about it or bring in your expert and, and have them help you write a so on, right? So of course, on demand can be done. Um, again, blend is best. But I think when you're, you know, you're thinking about nonverbal communication and the complexity of things and how, how long live something might be, 
um, then yeah, that makes sense to do this in a live situation. So uh, what about a situation where we have new processes that have been documented and we need to communicate them and explain them by role um, to uh, within an organization? Any thoughts on that? Um, what have we got here? We've got well, online. Yep, live on. of course, we got people getting it right with the blend. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Why did yeah. we think on demand first? If not a blend, then on demand. Well, um, it, the processes may need to be accessed in the course of work, mm. uh, i.e. that that moment in time, just in time, you need that information about the, the, the thing you're doing. So to know you can get them, find them, spend 10 minutes having a bit of just in time learning could be really, really powerful here. And um, uh, however, as with our other answers, what about if we wanted to do these live? Well, uh, of course, you know, bringing a new team, a team together with a new process, making sure everyone understands the process, the why, you know, and have the, the right um, attitude towards it to bring it in and use it, deploy it, best done perhaps with a live session. So blend is the right answer, Leah. I <laughs> Yes. All right. Let's try one more. Your customer, you have a customer experience specialist, but she's only available for a day. What do you do? Yep. Yeah, live. Live. I would agree. Yeah. Live. Um, of course, uh, blend is best. Don't worry. Blend is best. You're going to see if you've ever uh, attended any webinar, anything we always talk about blends are best and it's in the top tips and so on. What we see actually here, people saying live and record. I would agree with that. You have a live session. So let's take advantage of hearing that person talk about it and then have it recorded uh, so that it is available on demand and perhaps even can spark conversation. This is where you get to have fun with the blend, right? And say, well, we've got it recorded. Why not? you know, uh, ask people questions in forums or allow them to comment on it and see and sort of see what comes up. Uh, so absolutely. Um, the, the point being that the blend is best, but some things do context wise lend themselves more to one or the other. Um, one thing that we did, uh, experimented, played around with this, uh, speaking of a little bit of insanity, my quote at the beginning to do some really cool things. Um, a couple of webinars ago, we said, you know what, at the end of it, I think it was on measurement, can tell us, like, let me know what you're doing with this right now. And we had some amazing conversations. And so I'm asking you to do that again. Um, talk about your context, shoot me a note and say, hey, here's how I'm using it, or I've thought of it differently, or I would have said that differently from you, or here's how I'm doing it, this really helped, um, and see what kind of conversations we have. Uh, and I know that's my email, but don't worry, I'm constantly going to Andrew and saying, hey, this came up, can we talk about it? And so. Uh, lots of cool stuff. We also have other goodies coming out. You will, I'm sorry that Phil, uh, Philip left. I saw him leave, but he asked the question, what kinds of things do we ask in order to get at whether something should be live or on demand? The handout that you're gonna get in the follow-up email um, has all of those considerations written sort of as questions, like when this is happening or when this is happening. So you'll get some good uh, intake questions there. Along with other goodies is we have a new ebook that just went out, look for it on Leo Learning com in our resources section uh you probably just got the um either an email or a chat with the with the link in there but this is about being brilliant on a budget i like to call these the perfect crime where <laughs> you have to get something done with just a little bit of money and usually it forces you to come up with something amazing um but be brilliant on a budget much kinder title and thank you overall thank you so much get in touch with us uh again you're welcome to contact me directly uh, would love to hear about what you're doing, your thoughts, so on, but you're welcome to talk to either of us, any of us, uh, and we absolutely love that you joined us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you from me as well. Um, my email's there for anybody who needs it. And if anybody wants to stay for a couple more minutes or there's a question you haven't um, asked and you want to ask, Rose and I will hang around for five minutes or so, I, sh I should think. Um, yes. I I just thought of something, Rose, which is um, we've been doing this extraordinary uh, sort of enterprise-wide quiz game called Genius. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, where, where people uh, download an app onto their phone and um, 
that have a number of questions around a topic, say product, you know, product training in their business, they are playing a quiz against somebody. So it feels like it's live, mm. but it isn't. So that the reason I'm, I, I'm bringing it up sort of after our half hour is because it's a sort of fake live. Yeah. Um, it actually feels like a live quiz against a person in the organization and yet it is not completely synchronous. Um, and the reason that really, really works is because there is something live about a sort of sense of competition. You mm. know, just mm -hmm. doing just now, where we're all, we're asking a question and people are answering, or you could do a poll, um, or you could do a quiz and stuff like that. You get the competition of being up against people in a live context. Uh, but it also really feels like it's always available. Yeah, so it gets that I gets like, you know, both worlds. Yeah, I love that, Andrew. Actually, you know what you just made me think of is I have this quiz game on my phone. I think it's called Trivia Royale. I obviously I'm a sucker for a good trivia game. And I think they're doing the same thing in that, where it appears like I'm playing somebody, but it's actually somebody who's filled in those answers previously, and now they're just making it feel like they're answering at the same time. And I, until you said that, I don't think I realized that that's a great example of faking it. Mm. Mm. It's a very compelling way to do it. Um, you're right. Yeah, the product genius um, that we created does that. That's just fantastic. Yeah, it, it works in a game in a game context. I mean, the, yeah. the whole, by the way, you know, let's, um, we are doing a, um, a webinar with um, some colleagues in about um, less than a month um, about games. And one of the big things there is multiplayer mm. um, because games now have become, uh, you know, mul multiplayer consumer games and learning games are really following closely now um, so there's a lot of opportunity for live gamified learning as well yeah it's a whole other topic whole other topic i mean that's a nice confluence of social learning which is how we learn in general um mm. and and live and on demand all at once i just i love our industry we come up with amazing stuff yeah. like that all the time um, wonderful. Well, thanks for hanging on um, a little bit longer, everybody. And we'll definitely, I'll be looking for email. Um, and we'll see you in the next webinar, we hope. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye.